Well, hi everybody. Uh, it's Jeff Wetlaffer here, coming to you from the Redmond campus uh, here at Microsoft, and uh, we're here today to talk about uh, power management in the enterprise. And with me today is Mark Agar. Mark, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me on. Great. So, so maybe you could tell us what exactly do you do here on campus? What's your role in your Microsoft? So I have a pretty unique job title. I am um, my full business card title is Director of Environmental Technology Strategy. That has way too many letters and syllables to be an address book. <laughs> Must so, be an acronym. So my address book title is Environmental Technologist, which goes over a little easier. Okay. Uh, so basically what that means is I'm focused on a couple of things primarily. First is green IT, um, so which is pr principally uh, an energy efficiency um, okay. issue at Microsoft as we make software as opposed to hardware. Although we do have some hardware issues uh, that we like to get involved with when we think about the life cycle of PCs. Sure, yeah. Um, and then on the other side of the equation, I, I think about the role that IT can play in helping us live more sustainably. So things like um, transportation, buildings, smart grids, carbon accounting, those sorts of things. So I get involved in those those two areas uh, pretty evenly. Uh, but today okay. we're, I think we're talking about the former. Yeah. So and I'm sure you're getting more popular uh, on campus with uh, the, the growing interest, uh, the new efficiency interest of of uh, organizations and our partners being more efficient with IT. Um, maybe you could share with us. Uh, what product groups you're speaking with. You know, obviously we're here at System Center, but uh, I'm sure there's other groups that are also speaking to you guys about how to be more efficient on both sides of that plate. Um, can you share with us who, who you've been talking yeah, to? Yeah, sure. So I, you know, so I um, come from Windows. I was the director of product planning over in Windows uh, Server for, um, for a few years. And uh, I, I came over to, to this new role, um, which is in our Trustworthy Computing Group. Trustworthy Computing um, is the organization that, um, that Runs the uh, the SDLC, the Secure Development Lifecycle, okay. which makes uh, Microsoft products secure and drives the process and practices around that, as well as things like engineering excellence. Okay. So um, we we are in a perfect situation to help drive energy efficiency best practices and requirements through Microsoft as a whole, okay. and ultimately also the Patents and Practices team um, also lives in engineering excellence, and they help provide that sort of same guidance to our partners and customers. So so. Our goal is really to to get Microsoft products energy efficient um, and, and at least you know instill the best practices in the teams where they'll start measuring and understanding okay. um, what their energy footprints are at the product um, level. At the product level, okay. um, and then also take that same same set of uh, guidance and best practices and get that out to to customers and partners. Um, so we you know I spend a lot of my time working with some of the big product groups, uh, Windows, Windows Server, and Office um, okay. are all sort of um, in uh, early planning stages for their next releases at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a very interesting set of discussions going on around there. And then we're also engaged with a number of product groups um, on um, specifically server product groups on some um, energy efficiency best practices for server products. And then we're um, in the early stages right now of, of uh, getting some guidance and best practices for our client products as well. So longer term, we hope to see all, all products out of Microsoft um, ship with some awareness at least of what their energy efficiency is. And especially with desktop products, make sure they're not undermining all the work that the Windows team sure. does in um, invest in investments in energy um, power management. So like an application layer kind of overriding what all the benefits and features we've built into an OS or a hardware relationship. Exactly, yeah. I mean, it's, it's very easy for one application to inadvertently undermine all the power management. Um, yeah. um, the Trump card over top. Could just exactly. Um, yeah. So yeah, so there's there's actually, we have a set of guidance right now out um, on the, uh, the WinHEC, uh, not the WinHEC, like the um, uh, WHDL, uh, I can't remember what it's called now. The, we'll, the, put, the, we'll put the link. Yeah, for whatever you. that is. Um, <laughs> But it's, as you know, as you might be able to tell, I can't remember what it is, and it's almost impossible to find for the average person. Uh, so we need to do a much better job. about our search. Exactly. We need to do a much better job of getting that information out there. When yeah. you find it, there's actually a lot of really good information. The only problem is there's a lot of really good information. There is a lot. And yeah. so it's not particularly clear to the average developer what they should be focusing on first. So that's okay. a, going to be a real focus for us over the next 12 months or so to figure okay. out exactly what we want the industry to do. So are, are you, as a group, trying to, are, are you striving to achieve a set of guidelines for the product groups that was uh, similar to a few years ago, the Trustworthy Computing Initiative, where we, we, we defined as, a, as an architectural underlying of our product development, there was a series of security guidelines to follow. 
Are you trying to achieve the same thing, Mark, with, with kind of power and green activity? That's, that's exactly it, yes. Okay. I mean, there's, there's going to be some things that we ask people not to do. Sure. And there's going to be things that we ask people to do. You know, similar to like don't use unsafe APIs and right. do, you know, uh, help run security. Yeah, code. exactly. Yeah. So, so there's, there's two, two elements of that. You know, and we, we've yet to determine, you know, because we have a sort of finite budget. Of, uh, of asks that we can ask like every product group at Microsoft sure, to do. Yeah. And so we're working with the, the Windows product team to figure out exactly what we should be, up, be expecting. Um, what's realistic to exactly, ask. Exactly, what's realistic to ask for, for the entire you know, Microsoft product uh, portfolio. Um, and then you know, get down to the, you know, what are the best practices that we want people to, 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 to do um, once they've sort of done the mandatory stuff. Okay. And are you seeing a lot of traction? You mentioned some, some interest in working with the Office team. Are they you know, trying to make things like Word more efficient? Well, the interesting, the interesting thing with Office is that um, Office, Office can play um, two roles. Uh, one is they can you know, make Office efficient and make sure that you know, Office isn't undermining sleep scenarios, for instance, okay. you know, out the Outlook and Keep Outlook. Keep the machine up and running. There, you know, there are applications that run like, all the time on people's desktops, and you know, we want to make sure that those applications aren't inadvertently doing something that undermines power management. Okay. Um, the thing that's actually, I think, more interesting um, for Office's perspective is, is the role it can play in, in helping people live, you know, live and act more sustainably. Okay. Uh, there are applications that get used a lot. Outlook is a good example of an application that um, you know, that has a lot of information about what we're doing yeah. um, and could certainly um, um, play in a number of different scenarios um, to help people, you know, operate more effectively. Okay. Interesting. So, um, when we talk about things like helping our customers be more um, IT efficient or power efficient, what kind of things are we hoping to achieve, you know, outside of the product group efforts and those relationships? Obviously, I guess there's guidance about how to configure Windows or configure an Office product, but are there other types of guidelines that your group's trying to achieve? Um, you know, best practice approaches to uh, running a green IT shop or something of that nature? Is that? Well, yes. Yeah, so, you know, certainly we've been very vocal um, um, in conjunction with the Climate Savers Computing um, Initiative Climate as well as Green Grid um, on both PC power management um, best practices as well as data center and server power management uh, okay. best practices. So on the PC side, um, as you as you're probably aware, you know Windows Vista when it ships first time sleep was enabled by default. Yeah. Um, but we've been encouraging people on Vista and upcoming Windows 7 and even on XP to make sure the sleep is turned on and stays on, mm -hmm. um, and that people actually use utilize that. You know the average customer can save about fifty dollars a year just by putting their machine to sleep. Um, really, fifty dollars a year? Yeah, when it's wow. not being used. Um, so that's, that's really the big sort of win on, on the client side. Obviously, there's the stuff that we need to do to working with the industry to make sure they aren't undermining the automatic sleep functionality, which applications can do inadvertently today. Right. Um, on the server, server side, you know, we're very active members in Green Grid. I'm actually one of the alternative board of director um, members of, uh, of Green Grid. Um, we, are, um, you know, we are pushing energy, uh, data center energy efficiency best practices very hard. Our, Global Foundation Services team, which runs Microsoft data centers, um, is um, sort of very um, far ahead on best practices, mm -hmm. and we actually publish a lot of information um, mm -hmm. up on up on Microsoft.com. Uh, That's our own labs internally. Exactly, our own labs. Yeah, so Hotmail, yeah. Live, Spaces, Live Com, and everything yeah. else. All those all those uh, services are are in data centers that are operated by our GFS Global Foundation Services team. Right. And so we have a, they have a strong financial incentive, if nothing else. Uh, just like to, any customer. Absolutely. Yeah. To, uh, to reduce the amount of power and cooling right. uh, that those servers consume. So they're kind of a showcase, really. Absolutely. Yeah. And there's two, there's two key, key um, areas where we can improve efficiency. One is, as I said, on the, on the power and cooling, um, you know, not, you know, Having as much cooling um, would be useful. Yeah. Exactly. So we, you know, using things like free air cooling, is uh, is one of the the, the big the louvered potential. walls. Yeah, the fresh air yeah. systems coming Absolutely. through. Absolutely. Yeah. So we have a data center in Dublin uh, which uses free air cooling. Um, it saves an enormous amount. It's of more energy. resource to make the Guinness over there. Absolutely.